Have you ever wondered whether infrared LEDs can be dangerous to your eyes? In this video, I'm going to measure the strength of different infrared LEDs, compare those to some common light sources, and explain how LEDs can become dangerous if you don't check for something important. To start out, we need to understand that irradiance is what makes infrared light bad for your eye. This is basically the amount of heat that gets transferred to your eye, which can be measured in watts per square meter. I have an infrared irradiance meter here, which will give us the irradiance of any light source. But how much is too much for an LED? Well, there is a standard called IEC 62481 that provides guidance for evaluating the safety of lamp systems. It specifies the limitation for infrared at 100 watts per square meter. To give you an idea of how much this is, let's first take a look at some regular light sources and see how close they are to this rating. I have the meter set up here in a dark room, which you can see has a near zero reading. Moving this to face my monitor measures about one watt per square meter, which is well within the IEC threshold of 100. My fireplace is just a bit higher, giving a rating of about 10 to 15. Another scenario is indoors during the day with the blinds drawn, which varied between about three and 10, still below the threshold. However, my kitchen was much higher than I expected. With daylight coming into the room, irradiance was between 50 and 120, which exceeds the IEC threshold. So looking towards windows for a significant period of time could actually be dangerous. But how would direct sunlight compare to this? Let's go outside to find out. In direct sunlight, you can get over 3000 watts per square meter, more than 30 times the IEC standard. Even in indirect sunlight, the rating can be up to several hundred, which is a very good reason to wear sunglasses outdoors. Now, how do our infrared LEDs compare to these scenarios? Can they also be dangerous? I'm first going to compare three types of LEDs that are powered by the Spinel OV9281 camera module. The first type is a focused LED, which is very common and can be purchased cheaply online. The second is a diffuse or flat top LED that I created using my belt sander to sand off the spherical dome. The last LED is also a flat top, but I've applied a thin layer of white acrylic paint. First is the domed LED, which at a distance of five centimeters is roughly 10 to 15 watts per square meter. The diffuse LED is less, coming in at three to four watts per square meter. And the painted flat top is even lower, coming in at only one to two. All three of these LEDs are under the IEC threshold, but note that moving them closer to the eye can increase the resulting radiance. However, there is still one more very important factor that affects LED output power. LEDs are current driven, meaning their output directly corresponds to their input current. This is a different camera module that is designed for use as a webcam. Let's take a look at the current passing through the LED on this camera in comparison with the OV9281. I'm gonna start with the OV9281, which we can see here has a current of about 15 milliamps. In comparison, my other camera module has a whopping 120 milliamps. As you might guess, the corresponding irradiance has now jumped to over 100 watts per square meter, exceeding the IEC threshold. Other infrared LED products such as this IR torch can easily exceed this threshold and actually be similar to direct sunlight if they are too close to your eye. So in conclusion, while the type of LED, for example, domed versus diffuse, affects the output irradiance to some degree, a much more important factor is the driving current of the system. When building any system that produces infrared light, be sure to measure both the current and the output irradiance to make sure these meet standard thresholds. I hope this was helpful to you, and thanks for watching.